Hi there, it's Lee here. Welcome to iMind Blocks. In this video, I'm going to be making an effort to increase my burst coin hard drive reading time. So, with burst coin, the actual mining process for each block, uh, there is a seek time on the actual hard drives. And at the moment, for the uh, 100 terabytes or so that I've got here, uh, the read time is roughly around about 56 seconds. So, I'm actually going to try and get that read time reduced. And what that will actually help is to help me uh, find more blocks and earn more money via burst coin uh, mining. So at the moment, all the drives are connected via USB 3 hubs, and then they uh, plug into the actual uh, PC uh, using the actual onboard uh, USB 3 built-in uh, hub itself. Uh, but what I'm actually going to try to do, because I think that uh, connect is basically that USB 3 connection is um, maxed out. Um, so at the moment it's getting uh, an average of around about 500 megabytes per second and like I said it's taking 56 seconds to get those uh, drives read. So what I'm going to do is use a add-in card so it's a USB 3 uh, controller. So it's just got three, uh, sorry, four USB ports on the side. It's got a Molex power connector and it actually just plugs in a one times PCI Express um, slot. So because it's its own USB 3 uh, controller and then runs via the PCI bus, um, I'm hoping to kind of take some of the load off the, uh, the integrated uh, USB controller and hopefully increase the actual reading performance. Um, so I don't know exactly if this is actually going to work, whether it's going to make any difference at all, um, but I thought I'd try it and uh, share that sort of process with you. So what I'm going to do now is uh, fit this card into the machine and then we'll do some tests afterwards and uh, we'll see how we get on. Okay, so we've got the internals of our machine, which is worker free. So just down the uh, left hand side, I'll try and point it out without dropping the camera. Uh, we've got our one times PCI Express uh, connector just down there. Do you can see that? Um, and that's the one that we're going to be using for the add in expansion card. Okay, so just fitting the actual expansion card in now. I'm um, just making extra special care to uh, make sure that the actual back and the uh, front don't touch any of the other sort of uh, contacts, uh, particularly with the metal plates and also the heat sink, uh, things like that, because um, the last thing I'd want is for this to short out on anything. So I'm gonna squeeze that in there. Kind of actually at a reverse angle here. So pop that into the socket, just need to secure that down. Okay, so the hub also has a uh, power connector on there. It's a Molex power connector, so I just need to work out how to pull the power across um, to that. Um, if you don't power it, it basically doesn't work, so that is a, something that we need to do. Um, the actual power uh, main cables are kind of um, not in an ideal sort of a location. It is a bit tight in here. so. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look and then work out the best way to do this. Okay, so I had to do some rummaging around, but I found the actual power supply box. It was uh, tucked away under the bottom of loads of stuff, but it actually has inside um, a whole bunch of different cables, but one that we need is a Molex connector. Um, I was going to use a extension, um, you can see in this box here, um, but those cables, they were just a little bit naff and it looked a bit untidy, so I just decided to go with the actual proper uh, modular connector. Okay, so we're just going to fit our power cable now. Uh, I'll start off at the actual USB port end. I'm just going to leave these cables all kind of um, together. and I'll, It will just make it a little bit tidier. That's not going to be great in there in any case. That looks fine. Let's pop the uh, case cover back on. Okay, so the USB card has been installed. Um, I've left everything plugged in originally as it was in the first instance. Um, the only difference is this time I've got USB 3 extension cable and that's plugged into the new USB uh, expansion card. So then what I'm going to do is the lacy drives, they're plugged into one hub, I'm going to plug that hub into this extension lead which then goes into the new USB uh, controller, uh, leaving all the other drives um, as they are and then we can actually uh, test it. So let's plug that in now and uh, we'll see how we do. Okay so we've got the lacy hub at the back here, everything is kind of awkward uh, to reach. Uh, so I'm just going to unplug it anyway. So a little bit messy. Some uh, issues with it a little while ago, I'm not recognising drives and things. So we've got our lacy hub. OK, 
Okay, so that is the actual Lacey hub unplugged, and I'm just going to plug in this hub into the USB free extension lead on the other side. And hopefully all goes well, and all our drives will be reconnected and uh, discovered in Windows. Okay, so all of our drives are now showing up. Um, I had to actually swap over the USB extension lead. Um, that one seemed to be causing a few glitches. I've used it before and had some problems with it, but I think I've now confirmed that that lead yeah, actually has a problem. Fortunately, I had another USB extension lead, so that's uh, looped under, and uh, everything appears to be fine. So all the drives are showing, and so now I'm just gonna actually test it with J minor uh, for the first time and see how we get on. So for the last time, the scan time was uh, 56 seconds in total, and there was an average uh, bit rate of uh, around 500 megabits. So normally on the first startup, the actual startup can be slower because obviously all the drives got to wait to spin up, they're all being kind of idling. And hear them all spinning up uh, bit by bit, I'm not too sure if you guys can actually hear that. Okay, and we are off. So it's got the correct capacity on there, that's a good sign. Reading through the first drives, we've got this average bit rate here. Um, it normally starts off quite quickly, so we've got 700, 805 megabytes per second. Um, further down, 782, uh, 67%, uh, 743. Um, I know when it was 89% last time, it was reading at 503, but it looks like it's um, working. Okay, so in this time we've got 89%, 620 megabytes. Let's wait for it just to finalise. Yeah, so super. So it's actually gone through all the way through. Um, the last part was uh, uh, 620 megabytes average, so that's up over 115 megabytes. And the best deadline uh, was reported, so the deadline, sorry, was uh, obviously reported as we go. Uh, but the total scan time was 46 seconds. So that's actually 10 seconds faster uh, than the previous. So really happy with that. Okay, so I'm really pleased with the actual performance. We went from 503 megabytes average read and a 56 second scan time uh, to 620 uh, read on average and uh, 46 seconds uh, scan time. So saving 10 seconds on every single block. So I'm really pleased with that performance. So I wasn't too sure whether this was actually gonna make any difference, adding that uh, USB expansion card, um, taking some of the load off the integrated USB hub. I wasn't too sure whether it was gonna make much difference um, at all. But actually it's made a great deal of difference and I'm really pleased with the actual results. So if you've got a setup like mine and you wanna kind of uh, increase your hot reading time, um, this is uh, one way to do it. So really good performance. I think from here, one of the other things that I will try is using one of the uh, GPUs to read, because um, at the moment I use the GPU integrated into the actual CPU. Um, so I think I could probably improve the read times uh, even further still, but I think it's a uh, really good progress and I'm really pleased. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll